Goeiedag, dit is Kleurnet. Toerisme en dan toerisme in verband met Turkije. Dan zult u zeggen, ja, wij zijn wel eens naar Turkije geweest op vakantie. Maar er zijn natuurlijk twee kanten aan het toerisme naar en van Turkije. Want er komen ook Turkse mensen uit Turkije naar Amsterdam. Net zoals er mensen uit Nederland naar Turkije gaan. En er zijn allerlei groepen in. Je hebt natuurlijk heel veel Turkse mensen uit Amsterdam of Zandam of Purmerend die in de vakantie naar Turkije gaan of familie gaan opzoeken. Maar er zijn ook mensen die zeggen, nou ik wil in mijn vakantie wel eens wat anders zien. En dat kun je dan echt het toerisme noemen. We gaan praten met Bes Bülent Simsek. Hij komt uit Turkije en hij is gids. Hij is gids voor Turkse mensen in Amsterdam. Die hier dus komen rondkijken. En in Turkije is hij gids voor mensen uit het westen, zeg maar, die daar komen. We gaan het gesprek in het Engels voeren, want mijn Turks is niet zo goed. Maar we gaan dus praten over toerisme in Turkije. Welkom, Bess. Thank you. You speak very well English, eh? but you, you, have, you went to university in, uh, in America. Uh, in fact, after I graduated from the University of Istanbul, I was in America to take my master's degree. Uh, so it was about a year and a half to complete a master's degree at the University of Maine. Yeah. But <laughs> it made you uh, aware of English and the way of thinking of the American people? Well, of course it gave me experience to live in America, to study in America. But before I was in Europe, in England, I was even in Holland uh, at the age of 19. Uh, so after I completed traveling in all Europe, I went to America. Yeah. But you never went into business. You 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 went into traveling full time. Uh, at that time, I was studying when I was in America. Then, uh, after I completed my uh, studying, came back home, uh, completed my military service, which is still compulsory in Turkey. You know, used to be two years. Now it's a year and a half. Then uh, took some courses to be a guide uh, to be this sounds strange you have a master in bus business administration and still you decided to go into travel business uh, that's right why that's you right. like traveling i really do i really do i love what i'm doing guiding people doesn't matter if they are turks or foreigners when they come to turkey i love what i'm doing this is more important i think in the life yeah absolutely and you, you meet a lot of people That's right. Yeah, yeah. Now you're here in Amsterdam with a group of people from Turkey at the moment. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now tell me, wh wh what kind of people are these? Are these people from from what area, and, and are these rich people? What what kind of people come from Turkey to visit Amsterdam? Uh, this time of the year we are having a holiday, religious holiday in Turkey. Yeah. Normally it's four days, but if it is in the middle of the week, uh, If you at the beginning of the week, uh, Saturday and Sunday, end of, end of the week, so it makes a long holiday for Turkish people. So the ones they can afford in it's last. It's funny. Yeah, there years. is there is not only Slachtfeest as we call it. Yes, the 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 the, the, the slaughtering of the of the sheep uh, festivities. But was this week we also have the Holy Festival of the uh, Hindu people, and it all has to do with uh, you know springtime. And and the moon. In fact, it is uh, it's a coincidence uh, because uh, our religious holidays are changing. Uh, although after our great leader Atatürk's uh, reforms, we change our calendar. Among the Islamic countries, only in Turkey, we are using Latin calendar, just like yours or rest of Europe. Yeah. Except Turkey, if you go to any. Islamic country, Iran, Iraq, Egypt, uh, Saudi Arabia, they are still using Arabic calendar or Islamic calendar. Which starts S with the birth of Muhammad. Exactly. Well, I wouldn't call it birth of, but the migration from Mecca to Medina is the beginning of the calendar. So it is based on the movement of the moon. But our calendar is just like yours. And that's why uh, religious holiday period, every year it is changing. Mm. The well, difference is 10 days yes, every year. Yeah. So well, we have the same, of course, with, with, with Easter, with Pasen, because that is the first 
Sunday after the first full moon in the spring. And that changes also, you know, in a period of two or three weeks, actually. But still know. during the springtime, though. Yeah, it's still s during springtime. So Ours is, is changing after 50 years. It's uh, If it is wintertime uh, this oh, year, maybe it is summertime okay. after some but time. So it's a coincidence that all these uh, festivities fall together. Now, coming back to your group. So these are, are, are rich people that come they to... They are uh, not really rich. In the past, when I say in the past, maybe 15, 20 years ago, only rich Turks were going outside of the country. But nowadays, in my group, for example, there are secretaries, uh, there are bank clerks working for a bank because the banks are closed and they can afford to come and visit another country for four or five days. Give me an idea. If we go to Turkey with you know uh, with a tour and stay in a hotel for a week, it costs maybe eight hundred guilders, a thousand guilders, yes, mm -hmm. uh, five hundred dollars. Say, how much do these people pay, uh, pay f in Istanbul to come to Amsterdam for? To come to Amsterdam for four or five days, including a hotel, which is. Uh, good quality hotel. Right now we are staying at Holiday Inn mm -hmm. near uh, Rai. Yeah. Uh, but I've been to Amsterdam a few times and uh, last time we were staying in Crown Plaza or four star, five star hotels, yeah. nice hotels. Good hotels. And the money they pay for four or five days around $750 Dollars. including uh, breakfast and the uh, hotel and uh, playing but, but not, But not a dinner? Not the dinner. Okay. No. And now you come with the group, and and what do you do with the group from of Turkish people to come to Amsterdam? I mean, what what they do? They want to see. Uh, well, I cannot see all of them are interested in one subject. It depends on the group. Uh, in the group, sometimes all of them are interested in going and visiting Van Gogh Museum. Sometimes uh, some of them are interested in the strip shows. Uh, or going outside of Amsterdam when we make a Grand Holland tour. Yeah. Uh, almost all of them are interested in going and visiting another city like Rotterdam, uh, uh, La Haye. So I in basically it's the same as the American, but there's a few things. First, many Americans come to Amsterdam and think, oh, there is like a free marijuana here. Yes, mm -hmm. you can go to a coffee shop and smoke marijuana. Yeah. Americans come to Amsterdam and for two days they are like, ah! They're totally stoned. Is that the same with the Turkish people? Uh, it's not the same at all. Because uh, the country is different, uh, people are different, way of life is different. Uh, in the past, the hash, kind of hash, it was growing in Turkey. And uh, now, after we got the American aid in 1960s <laughs> or 70s, we stopped growing. The same as in Nepal, there was a free That's market right. for... And uh, among Turkish students or kids, smoking marijuana or hash is not popular at all. When I say the, p the percentage, you cannot believe, it's maybe 1% or 2%. And uh, there is no reason behind the, of it because we put the kids into prison, uh, long time prison. And it's, it's not like that. But what, what they are not really interested in. But do they drink then? When it comes to drinking, they drink. They smoke cigarettes. They smoke cigarettes. They drink. Maybe seventy-five percent of them they smoke cigarettes. Yeah. But, but they, they don't do like like in Sweden. They they, they take no. something like no. like cigarettes uh, or chewing nicotine, uh, so. chewing no, stuff. No. 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 Are these very good no. kids or is there so much to do in uh, This Turkey? is the way of life, I would say. Uh, that's, that's uh, we are a different country. We are a unique country. We are Islamic country, but uh, as a good Muslim, you must not drink because it's forbidden in the Holy Book Quran. Mm -hmm. And if they see you or catch you drinking alcohol in Saudi Arabia, in Iran, or in some yeah. other Islamic countries, they put you in prison. In Turkey, doesn't matter if you are a Turkish citizen kid. You're coming from a small village or from a big city. You are American or Dutch or German. Maybe you are hearing Ezan, the guy who is calling you to pray five mm. times a day yeah. from the minaret. You hear the sound, 
just next to the mosque, maybe you are enjoying drinking your alcohol, yeah. beer or wine. Or what you say is actually there is a separation between church and state. There is a big, it, we are a secular state, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And that came it's with your choice. If you want to uh, smoke cigarette, you smoke cigarette. If you want to take, uh, drink okay. alcohol, But this, this comes drink. from, uh, from Kemal Ataturk. He said, we After want to be Ataturk. a modern nation. The lifestyle has changed because it was his aim to make Turkey a modern, modern country state, yeah, yeah, yeah. and state. And uh, in fact, the difference between Turkey and other Islamic countries, Ataturk. Okay, that's that's clear. Um, still, coming back to tourists coming here, you say they want to see the strip shows. If yes. they want to go, they go. Yeah. That's they w something you cannot see in Turkey. Uh, when it comes to strip shows, not like here. It's not like here in America. No, no. In America, the you uh, have you have some uh, nightclubs, but are you know. Here it's more less like public. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here, uh, with your wife or children. You can walk through red light district, which and not is feel and not feel just secure. Uh, you don't feel bad, and it's just a normal thing to do. And it's really nice, and we are not used to it. It is different here. It is different here than in uh, Italy. It's yeah. different than in. Yeah, of course, we, 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 but uh, <coughs> now I don't see much. Turkish television and what I see I, I, I don't really understand but like in India there is no sex on television there's but there is a lot of well would you say sensual films yes they kind of kiss but I don't you know is it the same in Turkey that there is it, the is, not, it is not at all there is no difference between here on Turkey when it comes to TV broadcasting we have cable TVs it's your option you can even watch uh, sex movies or when it comes to normal TV broadcasting, government broadcasting, or yeah. private TV broadcasting, there, there, there's kissing and uh, cuddling okay. and everything. It's just like here or in Italy or England or any Western country. Yeah. So no. okay. I wouldn't compare Turkey with India. No, no, no. But uh, let me ask a critical question. When we see a situation where, uh, like a year ago, there was an earthquake, Mm -hmm. And you see the villages there, and, and then you see, oh, d these are poor people, yes? Uh, we don't see so much on television, say, the situation in Istanbul, where there are shopping malls, where there is a modern situation. It feels as, as if we are fed an image of Turkey being poor. Wh why is that? Is that because the, the Dutch television doesn't, doesn't go into the shopping malls? Or? That's one of the reasons, because shopping malls are not interesting for Western people. Our shopping malls, our uh, TV broadcasting, our cinemas, our uh, production, so many things are better than many Western countries. Uh, but the tourist, as the Westerner, they are not interested in this kind of He things. wants to go to the Kasbah. That's right. They are <laughs> looking for... Uh, we have shopping mall, but they don't go there. They prefer to go to a place called Grand Bazaar, to see oriental things. That's yeah. what they are looking for. Yeah, yeah. But so you say in reality Turkey is more modern than we perceive. We have modern places, we have poor places. Uh, although it was... Well, maybe not say poor, but say traditional places. Traditional and poor at the same time. Because we are still considered as an underdeveloped country. In, in a sense, but you want to become a part of the European uh, um, Euro uh, group? Eh? With, with, with well, we want to be the uh, member of European community. Uh, I don't know why we are not still not in yet. They didn't accept us in yet. Maybe there are some uh, re uh, <laughs> other reasons behind it. I don't want to talk about it now. But well, uh, it seems I've heard the I prime minister and the and the the, the 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 prime minister and the president seem to be fighting sometimes over <laughs> over some things <laughs> on the street. You uh, know the last crisis that we had on that. Oh, prime minister and president. Yeah. With the politically, it happens, but uh, both of them are good and brainy guys. <laughs> uh, when it comes to disagreement, it happens in any country. Yeah, but you you get a feeling that these uh, that the image again the image is different. I mean, I'm surprised in a sense to see you as a as a Turkish 
tourist guide, yes, okay. taking a group of Turkish people and taking to the same places as you would do a group of Americans or German people taking to the museums, to the, the red light district, to uh, Volendam, all those places. Uh, because that's what you do. You, you uh, Because uh, between a city people, doesn't matter where he is coming from, from Athens or from Turkey, from Istanbul or from uh, London, uh, from Amsterdam, I don't see any uh, difference. Uh, now, the world is a small village. When the, there's a new movie in America, uh, at the same time we are watching. When you are hearing the CNN news here, we are hearing in Turkey. Uh, last night I was uh, watching a European championship uh, football uh, between Turkish team Galatasaray and Milan here yes. in Amsterdam yeah. and I was not expecting second channel of Holland TV Two. they broadcast it it was uh, I was very happy because uh, I used to play football I am fond of football and I was not expecting mm. it in the past yeah. because uh, watching a Turkish football teams match it was just impossible from this part of Europe nowadays Europe is a small village mm -hmm. Okay, now the other, uh, since you are a tourist guide, the other side of the medallion is you take um, groups of Western people to Turkey. What do you do with them? I mean, they come there, uh, wh what do you show people, say, in Istanbul, and what do you show them outside of Istanbul? Uh, in fact, the travel agencies, uh, they are only taking them to the places, uh, historical places and museums, uh, and where the tourists are uh, really interested in uh, going and visiting uh, like Grand Bazaar or St. Sophia or underground system. Uh, I prefer to show them both sides of Medellin. The malls, modern malls, and outside markets, second-hand markets. Two faces, two faces, two faces. Two faces. And then they can decide they can have some idea about the people. Uh, when I bring uh, Turkish people to Amsterdam, uh, unfortunately some Dutch people cannot believe it. Are you Turk? They ask us. Yes, we didn't come from the moon. Yes, we are Turk, of course. Uh, the city people, uh, they are well educated. They uh, have their own jobs mm -hmm. or good positions. and. Every year, once or twice, they go outside of Turkey just for visiting. So between uh, other country citizens and Turkish citizens, when it comes to city life, I don't see much difference. Yeah, yeah. Th but that's clear. The, your message is, well, for me, the message is that my idea as a, as a Dutch guy, and I've never visited Turkey, um, that my image of, of Turkey is one-sided. I'm only looking at the poor people and what I see on television when there is a disaster and this and that and that and we have to give money. The business side of things, the modern side, the, the technology side, I've, I've never seen. And so I'm not aware of it. So that, that's one of the things. But now if, if people say, okay, we've been to Istanbul and we've seen the historic sites, what else is there to see? I mean, uh, would you suggest people to go to Istanbul and go into mainland Turkey, uh, the Asian part of it? Uh, I have been to Amsterdam a few times, uh, maybe nine or ten times. Mm -hmm. uh, every time I meet the people, they say they go to southern part of Turkey. That's what they are looking for, sea, sand, and they have a limited time during the summertime. They go to Alanya, Antalya. It's the popular place for Dutch people. Yeah, yeah, but th that's basically, t we are talking about people who say, well, uh, this year I go to either Crete or I go to Spain or southern that's Italy. Right, yeah. they, don't, they don't expect to speak Turkish, to see Turkish, because they want to have Heineken beer, they want to have chips and, uh, and, and, you know, and Dutch food, preferably, mm -hmm. and they want to party the Dutch way, get very drunk, and mm, the girls on the beach uh, are topless. Mm -hmm. But that's, uh, you could say that's interchangeable. Whether you go to Mexico or to Spain or to Turkey, it doesn't matter. There's a price question there, you know, is there a flight available and what does it cost? Um, 
In fact, uh, the price difference doesn't really make the difference. It depends on what you are looking for. If you are looking for sea and sand and potato chips, you go to southern part of Turkey. Mediterranean coast is just like uh, other Mediterranean countries like Greece or Italy or Spain. Mm -hmm. Mediterranean coast they have. But if you are looking for a history and the ruins, the cities before Christ, like Ephesus, Aphrodisias, and so many others we have, and this time you go to inland, or the, yeah. if you are But can you do at the same time? Can you go to the south of course, and, and take a of trip course, to those cities? Of course. All you've got to do is uh, get in touch with the right person like me. Okay, and but organize <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, you find in the tourist center, you f find places where you can book a trip to these oh, yeah. more... Yeah, yeah, and people yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Just after five days in the sun, I have a tendency to say, well, you know, and I've got uh, the ten and uh, let's, let's do some culture. It's Just like here, uh, when you are in Amsterdam, uh, they make day trips to Wallendam or to La Haye, or you can even go to Brussels and come back. It's the same thing. It doesn't matter if you are in Alanya or Antalya, there are... There are Day trips yeah, day to, trips. to the, the nearest uh, towns or nearest okay. uh, ruins. So uh, that's one way to do it. But are there also like specialized cultural trips? That cultural you take? trips or religious trips, for example, uh, for Americans. Americans are more interested in uh, religion, and we make uh, religious tours. Uh, footsteps of uh, Saint Paul, for example. You know, Saint Paul. He was born in southern part of Turkey, Taurus, and from where he started his trip. We're talking about the same St. Paul from the Bible who wrote That's all right. these letters That's right. from all kinds of places. Yeah, and if yeah. you, he, wa he was like a travel agent indeed those days. He well, went from place to place and he sent letters, yes? Well, he sent letters, but uh, in fact, uh, he really did uh, Christianity a religion. If there was no St. Paul, there would be no Christianity. He was the big me. organizer of the he Christian he faith. Yes, yes he yeah, with yeah. his lectures, with his uh, letters. Now Christianity is a religion. Otherwise, uh, yeah. if you ask me, I've been reading about Christianity. Christianity would be a tribe way of uh, believing in uh, religion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it would be a, a really small group in Israel. That's but, but right. But he really did so something. So his, his footsteps are an important... Footsteps, and uh, if you read the Holy Bible, you will see the first seven churches of Christianity is still in Turkey. So we make some religious tours for the religious people uh, in Turkey and visit the first seven churches of Christianity. From one place to another we go, and uh, there are organized travel agencies, so many. And, uh, but uh, you do those trips. Oh, yes. yes. Now, and do those American people, what, what are their interests? Is this fundamentalistic Christian people that want to, s you know, to go into uh, St. Paul? Or are they also interested in seeing the difference between Christianity and, and uh, Islam? Or you even have some other uh, Druid religions in the northern part of, uh, of Lebanon that are semi-Christians. There is Kurdish people there. There's, are they interested in this, you know, this cross over to other religions. Okay. If you think of the, the Turkey's place, uh, it is like the bridge between East and West. And uh, It's the marketplace for religions and goods and uh, the silks exactly, on the one side exactly. and, the, and the crusades it, from the other side. It was in the Silk Road in the past yeah. and crusaders to reach Jerusalem, that was the only way to go through Turkey at that time. Uh, St. Paul came from east to west followed. Alexander the Great was going through Turkey. Uh, so when it, when it comes to Troy, they are only reading it in books. And many people in the world, they don't know where Troy is. So if I take them to I think to it's Troy, somewhere in Greece, but it's, somewhere it's on in the Greece coast. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And uh, places like uh, uh, Virgin Mary's house, where she spent her last days with St. John. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, religious places for Christian people we have. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, not only for Christians, although we are an Islamic country, when I say Islamic country, about 99% of Turkish people are Muslim. It's a great percentage. 1% left, and 1% is the mixture of 
Greek Orthodox, Jewish, uh, some Catholics and Protestants, but all of them are not even 1%. So uh, even for the Jewish people, Turkey is such an interesting country uh, because we still have very old active synagogues in Turkey. Well, that's what we see in Amsterdam. Do you, do you take like Turkish people to the Portuguese synagogue here? Well, it was not in our program, but the last time during the Christmas time I was here, and in my group there was a, a Jewish, Turkish, Jewish origin Turkish citizen, and they were interested in, so I took them there. Uh, but when we pass by, of course, uh, I'm telling them about the history of the city and uh, showing them the synagogues uh, and uh, Anna Frank's house. If they are interested in, mm -hmm. they go or I take them. It depends on. What, what is interesting for Turkish people when they come to Amsterdam? I mean, philosophy-wise, do they, do they think about uh, Baruch de Spinoza? Do they know about that? Or is it Rembrandt? What is it? In fact, the, the beginning from the lifestyle, everything is interesting for them. Uh, it is the same when the Dutch guy comes to Istanbul, beginning from the lifestyle, everything is interesting. Uh, the way of life is different. Uh, when, uh, when it comes to Van Gogh, uh, the paintings, or so many museums, uh, you have uh, the canals, they are is, not is, is there, is there in, in, in Istanbul there are a few historic places, but is this whole idea about um, about museums? I think we have hundreds of museums in, in, in Holland and in, in Amsterdam. Is that the same in Istanbul? We don't have many. Uh, it's, not, it's not a cultural we thing. We have, but what we have you don't have here, what you have here we don't have there. Uh, when it comes to painting, for example, uh, maybe it is because of the Islamic culture. Uh, we don't have really world famous painters. But uh, when uh, we uh, have the. Explain that, because in Islam, uh, according to Islamic faith, you cannot paint people. Paint uh, human face. Uh, it was like that. It's not now in Turkey. Uh, I'm talking about in the past how it was. Yeah. That's why we didn't have uh, very famous international painters. But when it comes to archaeology, the findings from the ruins, uh, our archaeological museum, you cannot compare it with uh, any other museums in the world. Mm -hmm. One of the things that has always interested me is the parts of, of, of Turkey that are not so commonplace, yeah? like the northern part, the, 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 the Black Sea area. Um, even more, to you know, we, we get in, in an area where there's now lots of war in the Kurdish uh, situation, but what do you find there as a tourist? Uh, you know, the Black Sea coast. Black Sea coast, again, as I said, it depends on what you are looking for. Some tourists, they don't prefer to go there because uh, summer season is sh so short at the Black Sea. And the Black Sea is kind of sea, it's always wavy. It's not as warm as the Mediterranean Sea. But if you are looking for the nature, and uh, the trees, for example, we have high trees. Uh, it is greener at the Black Sea coast, uh, but it is not as warm as the Mediterranean coast. And culturally, uh, is, is there interesting Culturally, it's different. I mean, we now because. hear that they found the, 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 the Ark of Noe somewhere uh, out there in the, in the water. I don't know whether that's true or whatever, but you see it on CNN. Um, but are there interesting archaeological places? It is, there are, of course there are. Uh, Turkey is a cradle of civilizations, you know. Uh, that's why in the history there were so many civilizations. And at the Black Sea coast of Turkey, for example, 3,000 years before Christ, Hittite civilizations lived and built their cities. We still have the ruins. So the ones they are interested in archaeology, for them, it's like treasure going and visiting there. The ones they are interested in uh, mountain climbing, it's very interesting for them. Because as a Dutch guy, the country is flat. Going there, 
and mountain climbing is interesting. And at the Mediterranean... Uh, but, uh, can you ski in Turkey? At the Mediterranean coast of Turkey, uh, because of the climbing, uh, because of the hot weather, uh, there is not really skiing opportunities. Just go to the north. This time there are skiing places on top of the mountains and really, really nice and quality hotels we have. Mm -hmm. Would you say that, that taking a trip to Turkey culturally, how, how, com does that compare to taking a bath in a, in a different culture or you say it, it's still very Western? Like when I go to India, everything is different, you know? The colors, the people, the religion, the food. Uh, very few Westerners go to, to India without having trouble. <laughs> it's so totally different. How would you describe that if you go to Turkey? Well, India is completely different than Turkey uh, because some part of Turkey is in Europe. That's why we are considered a European country. And although the biggest part of Turkey is in uh, Asia, how we call it Anatolia, or in the past it was called Asia Minor. But some part of Turkey, for example, half of Istanbul is in Europe, and half, uh, of, it half is of it is in Asia, which makes it really unique and interesting. The lifestyle is the same. You cannot find the same lifestyle in India. Y I cannot compare Turkey with India. Uh, in Istanbul, it is more Western. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like half of my, uh, one of my leg, right leg is in Europe, mm -hmm. left is in Asia. And that's the So you street. can find both in Istanbul. It's not the same when it comes to India. Yeah, yeah. But when I go to India, I have to go to the GGD here and I get all kinds of injections for this and that and that. Do Doesn't I need, need it? it. You, do need you don't need it. It's not, need. it's not. Just take your ticket, go and enjoy your life yeah. and explore the country. But if you read a little bit or, uh, <laughs> as I said, uh, you may even get in touch with me or anyone I, to give a free advice or organize a tour. Mm -hmm. no, I am not the only person. There are so many travel agencies mm -hmm. in Istanbul. They mm -hmm. make they tours. They make tours. And uh, especially tourism is a big industry uh, because, what's uh, what's especially Americans, they are considering Turkey as an unspoiled country. If you go to Spain, mm -hmm. they know about tourism and they suck. They know how to suck your money. Chips and we are more innocent. More uh, innocent. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going to be after ten years, but yeah. still, we have places, and uh, it's yeah. coming from the nature of Turks. We are really hospitable people. Yeah. If you are driving your car, if you are having a punch in your tire, that will help you. In two or three minutes, someone will come and help you. Mm -hmm. Now, that's, that's where maybe it sounds negative or, or uh, critical, but uh, like, like corruption and stuff like that. We think, oh, Turkey, you have to pay the police and stuff. Is that true? Or? No, 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 not really. It is uh, because of not knowing Turkey, uh, the people's imagination, that's all. You no, think, in fact, really. it's not that. In fact, it is not like. Uh, if you want, really want to know about Turkey, you must ask uh, your fellow countrymen who has been to Turkey. You can yeah, get that. That's what I know, one of the things. There should be more Dutch, Turkish people that organize tours there and take their fellow Dutch Amsterdam people to Turkey because mm -hmm. they speak Dutch and they know about our culture and that they can take this away. Maybe, yeah. maybe that's a good suggestion to finish with. If you go to Turkey, why not ask... Um, the Turkish bread shop, the baker, th what someone Turkish in your environment, in your neighborhood, to tell you where he comes from and whether that's a nice place. Because that's a good way to uh, to see each other's culture, so to speak. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, reading books or asking the people, of course, it can give you some idea. But okay. going and seeing and having the experience directly there is the, the reality you learn with your eye. Oké, okay, nou, beste mensen, u heeft het gehoord, we hebben gesproken met Bess Bulent Simsek over Turkije, over toerisme daar, over toerisme van Turkije hier naartoe. Alles bij elkaar, een heel interessant gesprek over een land waar we toch eigenlijk heel dichtbij zitten. Zeker voor de mensen in Amsterdam, 10, 12 procent van de mensen in Amsterdam komen vanuit Turkije met een, met een Turkse achtergrond. En wij zouden als andere Amsterdammers daar dus best wel eens wat meer eh, toenadering kunnen zoeken. 
Vakantie is een hele goede manier. En u hoort het, er komen ook Turkse toeristen hier. Dus doe wat de Turken daar doen. Als er iemand met een lekker band staat, wees ook eens vriendelijk. Met andere woorden, wees vriendelijk voor de Turkse toeristen hier. Dan behandelen ze ons daar ook. Bess, thank you for uh, being here. Thanks. Sorry.